in Christchurch show, you get down from the North Island down here, you'd say a voluntary service abroad, do you? <laughs> well, it's like going abroad, that's for sure for me, because I don't get to travel far, this is an overseas trip. Yeah. So how are things in the North Island? Oh, I think in, uh, in, the, in the hill country, uh, in pretty good order really, as good as it's been for some time. We've had a good year with the sheep and beef, uh, well, good number of years actually, sheep and beef have had a turnaround and so things are pretty positive there. And, and on my part of the, of the country, which is obviously the Manawatu Rangatiki, the, um, the dairy sector really pretty stable. I mean, they're uncomfortable but they're stable and I think that uh, we're going along okay, particularly in rural, the rural sector, doing well. You've got quite a bit of hill country around that area, haven't you? A lot of hill country. Ironically, I think I'm the biggest sheep electorate in New Zealand now. I've taken it over from Southland, but, uh, so we do have a lot of sheep. Uh, and we're in pretty good order, other than the floods in, in uh, um, the early winter. The, the, um, the country's mostly got over that now, and, uh, and we're looking much better. But they did do a significant amount of damage to some of the hill country, and particularly the lowland dairy, dairy farms at the mouth of those rivers. They did quite a bit of damage there, but no, coming along, and, and they're doing, most of them doing okay. Farmers are pretty resilient, aren't they? I mean, nature keeps throwing challenges at them. Well, I think the interesting thing about farmers, and farming's changing, of course, but I think historically farmers have been where they are. They, you're there for life, and well, you anticipate you're there for life, and, and I think we're kind of long-term thinkers, so we, we put up with the short-term uh, irregularities and carry on. And I, th I think the change we're seeing, of course, in the, particularly in the dairy sector, it relates to this kind of corporatisation of farming, which is a very different kettle of fish than the old family farm, which I think is the backbone of New Zealand and probably still very important. I think will, will remain so and may even become more prevalent again in the future. Do you think I, we will swing back? Well, I, I think that it's very difficult for a corporate to operate in the, in the historical uh, manner in which agriculture is operated in New Zealand. And I, and I think that, that we're seeing that tested again right now. So I, I think there's a possibility we'll swing back and hopefully we can get enough uh, of the younger generation on the land. And I think that probably is one of our big challenges actually is the next generation and making sure we get them into agriculture and get them into farming. And it's really positive to see Massey and Lincoln's um, agricultural students statistics significantly improving. So that's a big bonus for us as well. How do you make farming sexy? Well, uh, have us four in the morning underneath a cow's not that <laughs> great, I guess, but, but I think there's a whole lot of great stuff about farming. And, and I, think, I think the way of life, the resilience it gives us, and, 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 and I also think that there are plenty of ways of us improving the lifestyle for people in, in rural New Zealand. But I think one of the really important things for us, and, and I guess one of my priorities as a rural MP, is to ensure that the government understands that we can't depopulate rural New Zealand and still have a positive rural sector. We have to encourage people to live or stay living in rural New Zealand and, and keep our small towns buoyant and, and moving along. And the tourism industry, interestingly, is complementing that beautifully. Uh, and a lot of parts of New Zealand, particularly the central North Island, the East Coast, and definitely the South Island High Country. So We've become very technology focused. Oh, farming today compared to what it was uh, when I farmed <laughs> is very different. And, and, and I think that's a, probably a great uh, attraction for younger people as well. It, it's a very different business. You know, you've only got to look at the veterinary profession where you used to have to be big and strong and male, basically. Now anyone can do it, and we have a large number of female vets. Very technology-based uh, business. You know, so very different than it used to be. The government position on farming. I mean, when I was a, a young lad. Number three on the bench was the Minister of Agriculture, but he's not in the front row now. No, he's he's not, and and I'm not sure that I um, really like that. But that's how the, that's how we work. But but I do think this government has a pretty good appreciation of the importance of agriculture, and, and obviously the last few years agriculture has carried New Zealand through a very difficult time, and I, I think that that's going to continue. There's no question of that. I guess our challenge is. Uh, as a country or, and, and as an agriculturalist is to diversify the industry as much as we can. And I think we're seeing that and I think even the free trade agreements point to a need for us to diversify a little more so that so the days of exporting whole, well they've gone anyway, of whole sheep, but, but milk powder and things like that will get broken down and, and, and produced into other product, I think. And so I think the more diversified we become as industries, the more um, positive it is for the country. So we're in good heart? Well, I think we're in good heart. I mean, obviously, obviously some of our dairy sector are a little uh, I'm disappointed with the results they're getting at the moment, but I think we're in great heart, really. And we're even seeing timber log prices pretty good, and we're seeing some diversity in the timber industry as well. So I think we're in great order, but we just have to keep at it, and we've got to work very hard to make sure rural New Zealand uh, holds its own uh, from a people perspective. In other words, we've got to keep our people in rural New Zealand.